Hey, thanks for tuning in. We are going to go check out one of these stories that are posted on CNBC today. And, you know, in a lot of our videos, we stress the importance of owning a home, how to buy a home, researching the market. Go check out my other videos. We do weekly hot sheet videos to just all the markets we're in to see what's the newest pricing on the market, what are the nice houses, if you should act quickly. Uh, but then we also, in my newsletter, we do almost weekly, probably two to three times a month. We also go over news stories that are really important. And I think one thing that people should uh, understand is that, you know, listen, re buying isn't always the way to go for most people. I mean, we have some things now with people are concerned about the interest rates, but it's a combination of the interest rates plus lack of inventory plus uh prices not really going down. I mean, there was a little bit of negotiation last year, but since the rates have come down and people have gotten used to what is going on, um, if it's a well-priced house, it's going quickly. Uh, so let's go check that out right here. The cost of housing is generally expensive across the board for Americans, whether you're a renter or aspiring homeowner. While both housing and rent prices have outpaced wage growth in most areas, renting can be a smarter financial choice in some markets, says Susan M. Watcher, a professor of real estate and finance at the Wharton School of Pennsylvania. So you need to realize that when you're buying a house, you're not just, obviously you want to worry about the monthly payments and you want to worry about the price of the house, but you need to consider how long are you going to be there? How much work needs to go into this house? Because, you know, I do houses all the time, but, you know, you quickly realize that you can't do every repair you want to do, even if it's cosmetic, because, you know, you have, you're putting down 5, 10, 20, 30% plus co closing costs. Then you need to furnish a house, which can be a, a, a cost that people don't really realize. And even if you're moving a lot of your stuff, uh, just finishing out your furnishing of a new house can be a lot more expensive than people think, plus with infl inflation. So, and one good thing is that, you know, when you're renting, some of the benefits of renting are you don't have to worry about repairs. Hopefully you have a good landlord, but you don't have to worry about repairs, um, you, you have the flexibility to move if you don't like it, like you like your neighbors, you can be, you break your lease, you can just wait a year for your lease to be done. Um, and we're actually finding that rents are coming down compared to housing costs um, in some of these news reports are telling us. So it, it could be a really, a much better alternative. And you know what, you're putting a month down of a deposit, maybe if you have a large house, like in New Jersey, maybe a month and a half, maybe down in Augusta, if you have a uh, a rental apartment, maybe it's a half month or 900 bucks, a thousand bucks. It really depends. Um, but the cost of home ownership versus renting has been making it a daunting to become a homeowner. It's less expensive to be a renter in most markets in the U.S. right now. I think it was something like 24% of all starter homes were bought by the, you know, these larger hedge funds who are trying to get into the single family rental business. Um, and this has definitely made the, and it's pushed the price point of entry level up and, uh, it's become, you know, you're competing with people who are paying all cash. So, you know, generally it's cheaper to own in a con in the country's 50 largest metro metropolitan areas, according to a recent study by Lending Tree. between median rent costs and median home ownership for those with mortgages, tenants came out ahead by $563 per month. So, you know, you're basically saving almost $600 a month, but you need to also consider your building equity potentially if you sell and you the price goes up. You also have tax write-offs for your mortgage deduction and things like that, but you are responsible for big things. Not responsible if it's your own house, but you know if you need a repair to the roof or a repair to the boiler or something like that, that could be five, ten thousand dollars $10,000, easy 20, that you might not have or you might wanna keep it in your rainy day fund. Um, owning a home can help you build wealth and after you finish paying the mortgage owning a place will probably be cheaper than renting obviously because you don't have a mortgage um, but you know you also have more freedom as a homeowner that renters may not have such as the option to install new appliances and even small home improvements mounting TV that's I mean you can mount a TV and honestly like even in my I also have I own and I also have a rental apartment I just fix things myself and you change them back if you need to, like painting. And sometimes landlords, if you're improving the place and they don't have to pull permits or anything like that, you know, you can customize a rental 
very well if you if you really get around it. and just google there's a lot of like renter friendly ways to alter your house that you can easily either easily repair or if you get permission from the landlord you can just go ahead and do it you know one of the downsides of leasing though is that if you're in a really hot market you know and you have a free market rate apartment you know your monthly costs might not be always be the same for the next five years you might see a $500 rent increase. This has been happening, you know, homeowners also are getting larger, especially like state of New Jersey, larger tax bills. Um, so you're not going to be in control of your yearly uh, increases because that is the thing that, you know, landlord, if you're a good tenant, the landlords want to keep you, but they also understand that moving is expensive. You're going to spend thousands of dollars just to move. You know, not only do they have to spend the time to find a place, but just to move. So I always say if you're staying f for more than like four to five years, buying a house is better. And uh, if you're not, then maybe renting is the better option. The medium down payment for a single family home in condominiums in the U.S. was 35050 in the third quarter of 2023, according to ATOM, a property data site. This was a 12.2% increase from 31250 the prior quarter. Oh, that's one quarter? 12%? Oof. Listen, you're, we're here learning together. That is that is a significant increase. Housing prices grew 7% in 2023, far exceeding wage growth and rent. Mortgage rates also remain high for potential home buyers. Yep, so we were in the mid sixes. We're down to the low sevens now. And on an average home, that just that half point increase costs you around $280 a month in your mortgage. So if you got a mortgage in December or November, if you got it now, it's cost you about, for the average home, which is about 385,000, it's gonna cost you around $280 more a month. The median asking price of rent rose to 1963 in January, up 1% from a year ago. So it's not keeping up with the prices of homes to buy, especially um, at the entry level. One thing you also need to consider too about your security deposit is broker fees. You know, city like New York, you're paying a one month, 12%, 15% broker fee easy. And if you think about it, that could be a go towards your down payment. That's just a sunk cost. Now you might have a relocation budget with your uh, work, but not everybody has that. And you know, even if you have enough money to buy a house, there are incentives to renting. There are millionaires in the US who can afford to buy a property, but choose to rent. Your landlord is responsible for, phys like I said, physical repairs, infrastructure, keeping up with the apartment, is making sure the property taxes are paid. Um, and they have raising property taxes too that, you know, sometimes you might not, it might not hit you to your rent increase. Uh, but that's the main thing is that they're outpacing wages. Not increasing as much as the home prices. So... There are renters who are simply discouraged from saving because it has become so difficult in some markets to become a homeowner. Just spending it on your avocados and ice lattes. Construction of new buildings in the U.S. That's the one thing is that we have um, the last 30, 40 years, there just hasn't been enough building going on. You can see by this graph here, they kind of go in line, you know, the 2000s, whatever, we had a more new construction, but... Uh, since 2020, look at this spike. So we're going to see some new homes come on the market soon, hopefully. But we're finally getting to a place where under construction is will be coming to market. A lot of these are going to be rentals. Um, you know, a lot of them will be homes for sale as well. But if you go to certain cities like Department of Buildings, they just can create a lot of barriers for people to build homes. And then also, when we at some of my other videos about rent stabilization. Some cities, towns have really tenant-friendly um, laws so that it disincentivizes people from building new rental inventory um, because the the cost, the you know, the cost and the laws that are in place in terms of the the rights you have as a landlord aren't there. But there is a trade-off, too, because some of these buildings, they get huge tax incentives. For instance, if you have a 1,000 units in the building, they might say, hey, 30% has to be for low income or like 25% has to be low income within a two-mile, three-mile radius. And they have housing lotteries like in the city of New York. So um, 
that's that is a reality. So, and th- this is the the thing is that back you know twenty thirty years ago, people were spending like fifteen twenty percent on of their income on rent, and now people are spending more than thirty percent of their income on rent. And this is also true for housing too. You know, some indicators show that rent prices are stabilizing, like I said, like the vacancy rates, which came up to about six point six percent in the fourth quarter of twenty twenty three which is kind of flat from the previous corner and that but uh, but it is the highest level since 2021. So, a little bit of uh you might not think this if you're renting in New York cuz the rents in New York have just been crazy, but this has, that has to do in my opinion with the rent stabilization laws because we have like 80, 150,000 empty units that are called being warehoused. So, that's it. I mean, if you you don't always have to feel the need to buy a house. You, renting could be an option for you, especially if you don't know what your job's going to be or where you're going to be. Maybe you're getting married. Maybe you're having start thinking about starting a family. Maybe you might outgrow a place. Maybe you might inherit a place. That'd be kind of nice. Um, but renting is definitely an option for you. You don't have to feel the need to buy a house. There are some huge benefits to owning a house financially and you know, emotionally and just like putting down roots. But right now, the reality is, is that, you know, in 50 of the most popular metropolitan areas in the U.S., renting will save you about $550 a month. And you don't have that upfront cost of your down payment and your closing costs and taxes and all that. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe to my channel, Marcus Shot on YouTube, Marcus Amadeus on Instagram. Check me out on Facebook. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.